I'm Pat Summerall, your host for Great Teams, Great Years, and Great Games. In 1974, the Dolphins rang up an 11-3 record to win the AFC Eastern Division crown. They were coming off two consecutive Super Bowl victories and were much favored to be the first team ever to win three in a row. The only thing standing in their way was a burly, brawling team of pirates from Oakland called the Raiders. In 74, the Silver and Black registered 12 wins and only two losses. The defeats themselves were narrow. One a three-point loss, the other one a one-point opening day defeat in Buffalo. At one especially tarred stretch, the Raiders won nine in a row in 12 out of 13 games. They clobbered just about everybody in their path with an offense that turned scoreboards into Fourth of July celebrations. The deadly combination was the hissing arm of Ken the Snake Stabler and the dangerous duo of Cliff Branch and Fred Boletnikoff. This particular playoff game that you're about to see was the number one attraction in postseason games because it pitted the two best records in pro football against one another. The disadvantage was Miami's because the game was on Raider turf. But the incentive belonged to the Dolphins to get that third title in a row. Now, let's sit back and enjoy a game that the sports media, to a man, called one of the two or three best ever played. The first drive would be crucial. And though the Dolphin offense indeed did not control the ball, the manner in which they didn't wasn't quite what Oakland had in mind. Just 15 seconds into the game, Rookie of the Year candidate Nat Moore went 89 untouched yards. And though they hadn't used the clock and established dominance, as is their style, they did lead 7-0. And that's their style, too. Shocked by the sudden score, Ken Stabler tried to bring the Raiders back quickly, but his first pass got Oakland in an even bigger hole. Looking at the play from our end zone camera reveals that Stabler's pass was tipped by linebacker Bob Matheson and Dick Anderson returned the interception to near midfield. After a 15-yard penalty further advanced the Dolphins, Bob Greasy went for a game-breaking play to a game-breaking receiver, Paul Warfield. Again, repeating the play, this time in slow motion, we can see that Warfield actually beat double coverage. Warfield got inside the cornerback and forced number 32, safety Jack Tatum, to turn his back on the pass. But Greasy's throw was short, and Warfield would have had to run through Tatum to make the reception. This was not the only opportunity Miami would miss out on one of the keys to this game, but still they led by seven, and Stabler kept trying for the quick catch-up play. Cliff Branch, who had scored 13 touchdowns this season, dropped Stabler's perfect pass, but a repeat reveals the reason for Branch's uncharacteristic bobble. He was bothered just enough by Curtis Johnson, whose flailing hands upset his concentration. But the missed pass hurt because throughout the first quarter, the Oakland running game was well under control, the Dolphins allowing just 26 yards. Later in the drive, Stabler and Branch did click, but a good play by Charlie Babb cut Branch short of a first down. On a repeat, notice a good stick by Babb, but the play is important because Babb was even in the game at all. He was filling in for all pro safety Jake Scott, injured earlier in the game, and by game's end, Scott's loss would be felt. Miami now turned to its crushing ground game and again would move into Raider territory. With Larry Zonka and rookie Benny Malone running very well, Greasy then turned to the pass and to another rookie, Nat Moore. But Miami again was kept off the board and was now twice held scoreless despite first downs on the Oakland 34 and 37-yard lines. 
Of course, for the moment, it didn't seem to matter, as Oakland was still having trouble moving forward. Sideways, they were doing okay. And so, forcing Oakland to punt, Miami got another break when Anderson was interfered with trying to catch the ball. And the penalty gave Miami a first down on the Oakland 44. But once again, Miami couldn't move despite excellent field position. They had had three opportunities to finish Oakland early, and the failure to do so would soon catch up with them. Finally, in the second period, Stabler got the Raider offense rolling with rollout action. After rolling and hooking up with Fred Boletnikoff, Stabler then rolled and found Marv Hubbard swinging out of the backfield. Hubbard's hard running got nine yards. Then his good block on Matheson sent Clarence Davis free for 19 yards. With a good mixture of run and pass going for him, Stabler got plenty of time and the game was tied. Looking at the play in slow motion, notice Stabler as he hits Charlie Smith with a perfect pass over middle linebacker Nick Buonaconti. Any shorter, and it was an incompletion or interception. Any longer, and Smith couldn't have reached it. Again looking at the play, notice that Buonaconti had no deep help. Was this the first indication that the loss of Scott would hurt? Scott usually plays deep center field, and on this play might have been there to help. Back, again using good running to get into good scoring position. From the Raider 24, Greasy went for six to Moore, and he was wide open, but Greasy missed him. It was a fourth missed opportunity for the Dolphins, and the end zone camera reveals how Moore got so open. Dr. Death, Alonzo Thomas, slipped, leaving Moore wide open. Two plays later, Greasy wanted six again, but could find no one open and scampered. After a teammate ended his chance to run, Greasy did find Don Nottingham, but he came up short of a first down, and Miami settled for a field goal to lead at the half 10-7, but it could have been much more. At the end of the half, number 13, Jake Scott had limped to the dressing room with an ice pack taped to his knee. He had hoped to return to the game, but could not, and Ken Stabler's ability to pass and the absence of Scott as well as that of Curtis Johnson, who was also injured, would tell much of the story of the game in the second half. Fred Boletnikoff would be the first to find success in the Miami secondary. Boletnikov showed super concentration on this one, but lost his argument that he was in bounds, and another look at the play supports the official. Needing all his concentration to catch the ball, he failed to get his left foot in bounds. Boletnikov's great catch was for naught, but several plays later he made an even better one, and this one counted. This time, Tim Foley lost the argument. And though a repeat fails to clear the controversy, it does show an incredible catch by the Raider receiver. Foley had pinned one of his hands, but Boletnikoff made the catch with his other.
Biletnikov's great one-handed catch and Stabler's 28th touchdown pass of the year put Oakland on top 14 to 10. Behind by four now, Miami on the next series went for broke on a greasy to Nat Moore pass that barely missed connections. Next came a key play when Greasy tried for kick at the right sideline with an open field ahead. Kick was ruled interfered with by linebacker Phil Villapiano. Another look with our slow motion camera clearly shows Villapiano's infraction that perhaps saved a touchdown but gave Miami a first down on the Raiders' 16. Greasy and the Dolphins were quick to take advantage as Paul Warfield, all alone, gathered in the pass that regained the lead for Miami. A repeat of the touchdown pass from our end zone position reveals that the Oakland defender on the play slipped and left Warfield completely unguarded for the six points. And six points was all because the extra point attempt was blocked. Miami led Oakland by two points, 16-14. The final play of the third quarter saw Larry Zonka roar through the middle of the Raider defense for 15 yards. Two plays into the fourth period, Greasy arched a perfect pass to Paul Warfield for 20 big yards, and it appeared the Dolphins might take control of this game. But on a third and three situation, the usually reliable Warfield dropped a pass, and Miami was forced to settle for three instead of seven on Garo Epremian's 46-yard field goal. The field goal set off a series of incredible events that will be long remembered by those who witnessed them. First, Kenny Stabler hit Brett Biletnikoff on the right sideline for a harmless 11-yard reception. Then came the shocker. Cliff Branch is covered here by Henry Stuckey, substituting for the injured Curtis Johnson. Branch made a fantastic catch, then took advantage of slow reaction on the part of Stuckey to complete a 72-yard pass play that once again put the Oakland Raiders out in front of the Dolphins. Branch's unbelievable catch seemed a bit too much for some folks, so let's look at it again from two different angles. Did he catch it or trap it? You decide. Oakland's quick scoring thrust failed to devastate Miami, and like the champions they are, they came right back. Bob Greasy, employing a kind of misdirection drop back that confused the Raiders secondary and allowed Nat Moore to slant across the middle and haul in a 23-yard strike from Greasy. Next, it was Zonka up the middle on two straight carries for 7 and 15 yards. From the Oakland 23, Miami's new Mercury Morris, Benny Malone, swept right end and swept it clean indeed.
Benny Malone's romp was almost as amazing as the Cliff Branch touchdown that preceded it. But close scrutiny from another angle shows just what made it go. Note the fine blocking of number 80, tight end Mar Fleming on the linebacker that helped contain Raider pursuit. Number 66, pulling guard Larry Little, did the rest when he blocked just enough to allow Malone to brush by him into the end zone for the touchdown. Miami had regained the lead in just four quick plays, but the final irony was they had done it too quickly. This incredible series began, innocently enough, with a short pass to tight end Bob Moore for six yards and an abrupt ending. Then Stabler went to sticky-fingered Fred Veletnikoff on two consecutive plays. The first one was good for 18 yards on the right side, the second over the middle for 20. to go and Stabler had the no-name defense reeling with his pinpoint passing. Cliff Branch got four more yards on the right side. And as if to prove that everything was going Oakland's way now, with 52 seconds left, Stabler's pass to Frank Pitts was good despite his bobble. Now, with time running out, only 35 seconds to play from the Miami 8, the Dolphins appeared to have Stabler, but he got off a desperation heave toward a surrounded Clarence Davis, who somehow came up with the ball for the biggest touchdown he'll ever score. Pandemonium broke loose as the Oakland Raiders had gone ahead by two points with just 26 seconds left in the game. This game-breaking play deserves another look as we see Miami defensive end Vern Denherter arriving a bit too late and Clarence Davis out-wrestle Miami linebacker Mike Colon and defensive back Charlie Babb. But the real hero was obviously Kenny Stabler, who hit on six of six passes on the vital drive. Stabler ended the game with 20 of 30 passes for nearly 300 yards and four touchdown passes. He had his team ahead by two points with just 21 seconds remaining. For Miami, it fell to quarterback Bob Greasy. He had 21 seconds to get his team in field goal position, but those hopes ended on Miami's first play. Miami's chances for an unprecedented three straight Super Bowl victories were finally over. For Oakland and coach John Madden, it was the sweetest of victories. First, there was revenge for the Raiders' loss to Miami in the championship game in the Orange Bowl last season. Then, too, this game will help to erase the memory of Oakland's spectacular loss to Pittsburgh when Franco Harris made his famous immaculate reception catch in the final seconds. Yes, today's great win erased a lot of hurts for a team that is always considered the most talented in football, yet somehow manages to go awry on the way to the Super Bowl. This is the year they may make it, depending on what happens next week against the Steelers. For Don Shula's Dolphins, a great dream has ended, and for the first time in four years, their season is over in December.